Welcome to the Euroscalers podcast. Today we have Windy here from Resystem App. And uh, we were actually in the same, uh, we were in the Euroscalers program while I was running it and you were a participant. It was two years ago. And uh, we met, say, a couple of months ago. And I, I got so excited to hear because you had developed really cool new techniques on how to sell. You kind of perfected your model. So I'm curious to hear more about that. Um, but before we get to that, so Windy, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, hello again, Rasmus. Nice to be to, to meet you again here. So, hello everyone. My name is Windy. I'm founder and CEO of Resistomap. At Resistomap, we are offering laboratory service and data analysis for monitoring antibiotic resistance uh, in environment. So it can be from wastewater, from soil, manure, uh, any type of water. Uh, and we are combining molecular genetics method and data science to to deliver fast and comprehensive results. All right. <laughs> Sounds great. And we in Finland don't think too much about this antibiotic resistance. We know it kind of exists in the hospitals, but as you said, you're measuring the water, for example, wastewater. So around the world, this is much bigger a problem. And if they can detect it in the water, they can make the right uh, decisions, how to adjust for it um, before it becomes some um, uh, epidemic of uh, some antibiotic resistant bacteria moving around the population. Exactly. Yes, uh, that's one of the example. It's an early warning system. Oh, also, you you also can use this monitoring uh, result for uh, finding where is the source of the problem. You know, because if you are, let's say, if you uh, reservoir drinking water, if it's contaminated with this resistant bacteria, of course you don't want, right? Like our uh, water, and not only reservoir drinking water, but also like for example the beach or the any place that lake that you want to swim at the place. So this is also another way to figure out if there is some contamination being leaked to our surrounding environment and especially drinking water system. Nice. So it's like another, quite, a, it's like more in the prevention uh, system rather than what is called like treating some patient or something. And that's why we are handling more environmental samples. All right. Well, nice. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing. Well, today we're not talking too much about water uh, <laughs> measurements and uh, antibacterial resistance. It will probably come up. Uh, but uh, we, I want to talk about your sales process, because when we started, that was two years ago, you did something. Then we did. you, you learned something through the program, but now you have made it so much better. So I'm so much, I'm so curious to hear what have you tried and what has started to work for you? Yes, actually, of course, thank you so much for that uh, event or like program. You did a really good job. And I, I can assure that, yes, you can see now I'm very happy doing sales. I think that's the most important. Uh, I always tell everyone, I guess the, the first thing first when talking about sales is changing our mindset. We need to love sales itself. I mean, the, the uh, process itself, because you know, when you like the work, when you excited about what you are doing, I think the productivity increased really, really uh, fast. And that's what I got from you. Okay, can I stop you there? <laughs> what happened? Other, among yeah, I, I'm so curious because what happened? It's a really good, this mind shift change. What is it that we mm -hmm. did? Or how? What mindset did you come in with? And what happened to make you change your perspective? And what is your perspective now? Uh, the first thing what made uh, my mindset change to, in the very beginning, I'm coming from research background, so sales is really something like, oh, I don't know, you know, like, uh, I don't feel like good to do sales, and I feel like bothering others or something, and like forcing others kind of feeling. But then uh, the, the mindset changed when, when uh, actually one of your talk talking about, forget about the cold email or this kind of uh, email that didn't reach the, I mean, people who didn't understand or who didn't need us, forget about that. Uh, because anyway, it, it actually didn't bother them. It just passed through their, their time, right? Uh, and then, but the most important is like our mindset. We need to think people who will, very, who will be very happy knowing that we exist. So that's kind of the thinking. Uh, really, I, I really put attention on that. So I, it feels like, oh yeah, that's true. Let's say if I know that there is a laboratory service like Resistomap is doing for, I think my PhD can done faster, <laughs> or my postdoc can be uh, do you know, can be done also faster. So this kind of feeling that I need to I need to find someone who really need Resistomap. So that's kind of mindset that make me feel like okay, really it's okay. Like uh, what you do is like really try to help people. 
And that's, I think, the best thing. Because in the original uh, idea, we build resistance up so we want to help people, right? And actually, self, it is the way that you, you try to connect to people who you, who you really need your help. So that's as well, I think, the, the most important uh, change in my mindset that, yes, actually, that's true. I shouldn't care much about uh, people being bothered or uh, being, you know, like cold email or people, oh, people didn't like what we yeah. are sending. <laughs> uh, I just focus only this few people that I knew that they will be very happy knowing that Resistoma exists, for example. That is the, the, the first thing, uh, mindset uh, change in, I mean, the change that make me, my, that make my mindset change. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Winda, for, uh, I, I think that's very important. I'm happy that you, that it happened. But then we, when we started, we did a lot of, uh, what you call a carpet emailing, but there's, when you don't really know exactly Per, like who to target perfectly, you have to give some idea. And we did a lot of emails, but you told me that you actually were able to be even more specific, like over time. So what ha what have you tried and what has changed? Uh, what, what has worked and what has not worked? Tell me a little bit more. I think what I like the most also joining kind of this accelerator where you meet people, a different company, you know, from different background, they use different kinds of tools that I could never came, uh, I never learned about that before. Uh, that's that's what I learned. Different kind of tools or methods, strategies, uh, and I I tested all not all, but maybe that I know that I could do it with the, my limit source at the time because we, we were still a young company, not so much resource, um, and then try to adapt different kind of strategy, but make it also like like research. You know, you have hypotheses, you you try this method, and then try to target this. It is work or not? And I did a lot of analysis on this, quite. It's actually quite exciting. That's why I'm saying like uh, when the more you know sales, the more actually very exciting thing you can find in sales. And of course, I, I also ask uh, my team to help me in the marketing, especially. So I need to make sure that the marketing team need to do uh, target the same that uh, what I want to do in sales. So let's say uh, in the very beginning, I kind of already hypothesis, right? Water sector will be our main big market and then let's say research governmental research institute gonna be like our target market for example like i think and every entrepreneur have this kind of target market anyway already so we we tested every in our case we tested every six months uh i mean with the goal kpis like normal like that but i make sure that our sales strategy with marketing are hands in hands so every marketing strategy since we are small so it's really easy to to connect this but I knew that if it's a big company, not so easy. But even you are still a small company, it's really good that marketing and sales are sitting down together, uh, having goal, almost the same goals. But of course, marketing has their own goals, right? It's more like try to get people. But, and then in sales, like I need to really more precise that I'm going to talk or contact this, this type of group. And learning, building this customer persona, I think is really important. Uh, I believe that if you learn sales, it's, it's, always, people always tell you like you need to build this uh, customer persona. In the very beginning, it was really hard for me because uh, you know sometimes most of the courses are targeting this kind of SaaS kind of mm -hmm. e-commerce mm -hmm. kind of business. While as you know, we are very <laughs> very heavy laboratory service. So what I did, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to find a similar kind of service like us. Uh, how they do, but most of them usually a very big company mm -hmm. like Metropoli Lab, European, if you're familiar with this laboratory service. So they don't <laughs> fit with us neither. So I get really difficulties actually in the very beginning. But uh, knowing there, there are many methods and testing it. So I think uh, that is like what make um, our, our sales uh, pipe system or process faster mm -hmm. because then we, we knew it. Even though I told you that we have every six months target, but in within two, three months that I knew that, hey, this is not going well. You, you should know, right? This kind of mm. feeling that it didn't work or I couldn't find the, the contact or like some difficulties. Mm. Uh, you just stop it. Yeah. Change to the next strategy. And like really quick uh, movement. And that's what I feel that the, when, I bear, when I do like this, like all the time, checking, testing this and how is the result. And then by the end of the six months, we, we do, uh, I think the most important also here, like evaluating, because I knew that people testing, but sometimes they don't have enough time doing evaluation on what they are testing. Mm. 
at least listen from my other other sales team. But in my case, I focused a lot in the evaluation with my marketing team. How is it going? Which one is working? Which one is not? Shall we try another method and this kind yeah. of thing? So, yeah. But yeah. Thank you, Windy. Could I you think... be a little bit more specific? What are the things that you were measuring? How, how did you evaluate that the marketing and sales were working? Because you said you were same, sometimes able to figure it out even in two months. Like, well, yeah, this is not, the strategy is not working. So what did you measure when you, well, what do you measure? Uh, for me, it's like, I think the easiest way if I can contact the target market. So that is the first measure, like, because of course I target, right? How many mm. I should contact with in this, uh, with this, let's say some, some way to contact, for example, emailing, I need to target, I need to contact 50 email, for example, or, or, or kind of numbers. I know maybe for some people 50 is too small, but for our area, 50 is really big number. <laughs> uh, but anyway, like I target that, but then when within one or two months, I found that I couldn't find any email example and i couldn't even figure out who is the, the the person that i should contact then i stop it and then okay then this is not the best way maybe we should uh check again like what is this of course then we try also to call mm -hmm. make a phone call i heard a lot that phone call is really good i think every sales that uh, was require you to phone call yes i agree with that i know even it's hard <laughs> most of our team are introvert can you imagine that that all of us <laughs> Whenever we need to make a phone call, we need to even like, you know, some space yeah. and time. We, <laughs> we need a lot of preparation just to make a phone call, but we still made it because uh, it's it a must, right? You need to, to call someone. Uh, we made it by a phone call and we know it is, it is true phone call, really, you get the answer fast. And indeed, some people, uh, when we send email, they, they actually, they didn't realized that we sent email at all or went to the spam or this kind of thing. So with the phone call, it increased the, the percentage of acceptance mm -hmm. or like at least they read what we do or knowing that uh, resistor map exists at least that kind of level and also know whether they're interested or not. So this kind of quick one uh, and then that's what I mean. Like, like yeah. in the two months, I think you can figure out already whether it works or yeah. not. And then you, you move to another strategy. Yeah. So when you are planning, not just one, one strategy, but it's like, I, I have like maybe six strategies already and just tested one by one. Yeah. And then what didn't work, go to the second one, but not like one didn't work. Oh, we need to build a new strategy. No, no, no. So you need to already uh, build the strategy from the very beginning already, like, you know, several plans. Yeah. I'm very researched. Yeah, but I, but I think that's good. I think when I'm thinking, how do I explain to researchers how to do sales or so now I, I actually realize I can also use this uh, scientific perspective that you're trying to figure out a method to get your message across. And it's a it's a scientific endeavor, you gotta see what works, what doesn't work, and you can measure everything. So yeah. exactly. Well, how about the marketing team? What what type of measurements do you have there? How do you know if that's working or not? Yes, in marketing, of course, uh, in our case, it's social media, right, it's very clear, especially during COVID-19. So we, we test several channels. Even in the very beginning, of course, we do hypothesis again, same, like uh, this channel is supposed to be for customer, this one only for uh, nice and branding and this kind of thing. And then we target KPIs, like we need to reach, let's say, engagement X numbers by numbers. Mm. So then we know uh, percentage, whether it's our method is effective or not. And of course, there are a lot of like free courses or like free blogs on how to build your your marketing post. Like for example, you know, there's three to one or one to three, I don't know this formula, mm -hmm. <laughs> like three hot lead to cold lead and something like that. Uh, my marketing team knows about that, but um, like he made also the formula, like different kind of post. So every month we already, plan what post we're going to uh, uh, post, it, or, uh, what kind of talk content that we will post. Mm -hmm. So we already prepared in um, six months oh, nice. <laughs> and prepare all the material. So even, uh, and on the other hand, uh, we, we also thinking for the next six months, what material we need to prepare. For example, this autumn, our new strategy is a vlog, vlog video blog. Yeah. Uh, so we are preparing the video since this, uh, spring, of course. So this kind of thing that uh, if you plan well, so you, you can prepare 
in the very beginning, even with the limit source, because, you know, I'm only two people in my team, my marketing, even part-time jobs. <laughs> so we need to make sure that with this limit time and limit resource, we can prepare a bit earlier by, by better planning. Yeah. Fair enough. So like yeah. that. That's good. Well, then I want to hear, <laughs> thank you. I want to hear what, what do you find is working? Like if you would tell yourself, you know, when you start like, okay, when these are, cause I'm the, these are the, the things you should absolutely start doing and, and be as concrete as you can. So what would you tell yourself, let's say two years ago or one year ago, what should they, what should Windy for two years ago do? I think it trust your gut <laughs> because, uh, as, as we discussed, many, if you listen to people or learning new things, you will know that there are many methods, as I, as I mentioned. Uh, but in the end, you knew it. Actually, there are certain methods that fit for your market. You should, then you do on the, the, I mean, you're the one that who knows better your market. So in my case, actually, I know the very beginning email should be the best mm. way to, for us, rather than phone call or whatever it is, uh, different kind of sales method. I knew that email, even very old school or whatever, but in my market, when we are talking about specific target, mar you know, like very mm -hmm. niche uh, customer type. So we should just, just keep it that way, but in more uh, efficient way. So like that. So I think in the very beginning, I was like a bit, uh, what is called like not sure, like because learning more method are very effective for very different kind of business mm -hmm. and like accelerate really fast. And I kind of tempted, right? I want to try that too. <laughs> um, but sometimes in the end, uh, you know better actually what is the best for your market. So keep going on that and make it a uh, more structure, like mm -hmm. I mentioned. So in the end, I decided that email, this is the way we're going to do email but I make it more better planning on how to do the email. So mm. th there will be another strategy, right? Even writing email, like how you open the language. Like I think in the course we learned that, like how to make email to your potential customers and those kind of two different strategy, like how just one paragraph, how about a bit longer paragraph? How about like different kind of strategy I tested. And then, uh, for example, I found out the best method for us is like, by keeping update in antibiotic resistant market. Like for example, who research group that has been granted funding, mm. let's say big funding on, on antibiotic resistant monitoring. So I asked my marketing, uh, I have myself, uh, the part-time team try to give me the list of them and finding the contact. And then I read through, so I make personalized email and like that. Well, so do you so read the research thing. proposal? Or the, uh, because yeah, you don't need to read all, no. <laughs> you don't have time to do, but at least from title or from this abstract, short, abstract public, the, the, uh, public, uh, description of the project, you will find it very short, like, you know, one paragraph or something. So just from that, you knew it like, oh, these people, and then kind of more personalized. I, uh, I'm very happy that you are doing this project specific, or if you simply just mention the title of the project, that should be fun. Mm. <laughs> you know, like in the course, we, we learned that as long as there is about them, it's not about us. Yeah. But, but, so but you told me that, life. yes, you, you, of course you have, you have the title there. That's great. But, um, when we talked last, you mentioned that you actually take a lot of time to, to construct these emails because you said there is yes. not that many clients for you. So you really put effort into each one. So, when, so exactly. do I understand correctly? You will read there. Uh, you will read the research some, or some of the, maybe the abstract and some little more stuff. Uh, well, how do you construct the email and what, do you have an example or, or can you tell, you, you can read it if you find it on your computer, but I'm curious, like how long is it? And, and like how, how comp, like how complicated, how, how detailed are you going here? What do you, what's one of these emails? What do they look like? In the beginning, it was hard as always, right in the beginning, but then, uh, you, you can have a template. So first, like congratulations for this. And then I will ask about like, I'm, I'm uh, like, you know, like the, that project. So it's so cool. Like kind of, you know, it's so cool that they are doing that. And then the, the, the second paragraph will be the, our our value proportions. Hey, resist them up. Uh, if you are interested to do this, uh, to evaluate your technology, for example, resist them can, can do this. And if, uh, and then, uh, for more information, more, more information about our, what we do. And I said, not this kind of the, like last time in the course, we learned about very long, not long, but kind of the sales uh, material. Mm -hmm. But now I just send these two page flyers. 
about exactly our method. Do you throw it because in there as a, a, do you have it as a PDF? As a PDF inside of the uh, offer? Yes. Yeah, all right. Yeah, only two pages. Hmm. Only two pages about our technical, about our service, like really co high content, uh, you know, about exactly what we do. No other things, no nothing about us, nothing, nothing. It's just like what we do. That's all, two pages. Because, <laughs> you know, people are so busy. They don't even need to know who you are. They just need to know what we can do to help us. So I just focus two pages about what exactly technology can help them. And then if you interested more, I'm very happy to do it. Like, you know, normal, short. So I, I have only two paragraphs, very short. First paragraph about congratulations and how cool yeah. they are. Second paragraph are about our value proposition. That This is the hard one that I need to make sure my value proposition to fit their research or their need. And this is what I, what I discussed with you. In the very beginning, uh, it was hard for me. It takes a lot of time. Uh, but then the more you learn, the more you read, even from the title, I can very quickly know how, how our value proposition can fit to their need really faster. And then I have those templates ready. So just copy, paste, copy, paste, and then uh, ready that. I just need to make sure that you are addressing the right professor or the right <laughs> name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always, I think that's the, the limit, right? If you don't do automation, that uh, there will be still a human error. So that's the challenge. Please make sure uh, I would recommend sending five email a day in the morning. So it's, so your brain still fresh and reduce the the, the mistake. Oh, that's good. And not, like not batch you, too much. Like short, you, very little, yeah. little, little like that. But every day, so you, you can still reach 25 email anyway in a week. So if I target 50 per month, so it, actually you can have a free two weeks in a way. So, yeah, especially if you're CEO also that you have, there are other things you need to do. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's good. Doing creative work in the morning is many people rec uh, suggest that. Like when you're fresh and you have... You know. Or, sorry, Rosmos, in my case, I'm not morning person. Trust me, I don't wake up. So this is actually a bit... <laughs> 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 but I work really late night. What I do is like schedule that email will be sent tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's also so also smart way to do it. So they don't, <laughs> you don't send us a two in the, in the night. Uh, I have my own tendency that I like, for example, writing. I, I've been uh, writing a book now on how to do accelerators and I'm writing another book on how to do this expansion that, that we have, we've done together and kind of like formalize it into a book. And I notice I more or less have to sit and write in the night. That's good. When I have a quiet time, the family is sleeping, then I can focus on writing and nothing else is bothering me. I think that's really good for me. So. <laughs> Good, yeah. good. All right. Well, so uh, but how, what's the success rate on these emails now? Because as when in the beginning, and this is where everybody you have to find some type of experiment, some formula to try. It might work, but now you are go. You have decided to go a very customized route, which is really cool. And but and we we talked last. You said that well, it actually works much better. Like even if I don't customize it like this, I don't get the replies I need. So do you have any statistics on how well these uh, twenty five or fifty emails a month that you're sending? What's the stats on that? Yeah, in our case, of course, it's very limited. Like this grant funding is usually like in twice a mm -hmm. year, so we just mean like very limited uh, numbers that I email them. But the stack stress at least to 40%, so it's really high, I guess. Yeah. And then from this 40%, re it is reply. But then uh, from this 40%, um, I would say maybe half of them that become our customers. And even like 20% of those is still really good for us because one project can be like quite big numbers. So uh, it's a really good, again, like understanding your business model, right? Like your, your, your market. So in our case, uh, we are starting from 2,000 to 70,000, mm. one project. So it's like, so even let's say if you have like a 520K or 530K is already a lot good numbers in terms of the ex effort that you are doing in a way. So this kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but then I mentioned, I tested several methods. So this is the most efficient. It's just the, because it's really we fit really to their value position is in a way it's like we're the painkiller. Mm. So it's a very high chance that they're going to use us. Um, but of course there are others like who are more like not sure whether is it needed or not. This one, I keep just feeding them yeah. <laughs> or like, uh, like giving like more. So then this type of people actually I told to my marketing team, mm. 
hey, please follow this and try to make this a persona for your target in the marketing, this kind of thing. So, so you knew that already. Um, and for this one, actually, for example, now, uh, it's new things that we try to, to, to try in our system model that to track from the last year. Mm -hmm. We learned that actually now we have new customers. Actually, they, they knew, they, they know us already from last year. So I was surprised because, you know, like, uh, I didn't expect, hey, you are there actually, the email there actually, I have been emailed with them a year ago. <laughs> oh, so they but, did, re they remembered you from that. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. And some of them even like two years ago when I was, uh, have an exhibition in Hong Kong and I was like, what? Okay, interesting. So this is the long, I don't know the word, but long term yeah. kind of customers new customer. It means that you so, are, so you're really a painkiller. Like when they hear it, it's like, okay, I don't need it right now, but this is great. And when I need it, I just have to remember the name, the system app. Exactly. So this is the one that actually now we try to, to evaluate because of course, when you tested the, the within six months, you feel like, oh, failed, right? Nothing's work, but you never know a year later, actually that person that we emailed, uh, uh come back to us. And that's actually a plan that big one, actually. So it seems like some people, they, that takes time to, to figure out what is the benefit of this uh, service for them, because sometimes people don't, don't wrap directly the need at that time when we introduce them. So that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm saying like emailing still is old school, but it's still very, <laughs> very efficient for certain type of business, especially kind of the, maybe more kind of what we do, you know, this very long, uh, surface in this case, yeah. our project is very long. Yeah. So this kind of thing. So, uh, I would recommend that sometimes don't feel like already all failed, but maintain to, to have the evaluation, not only yes, within six months, but try to the next year, go back to that one and check if those actually coming back to your customer, this is a new one. I also just gonna practice it this this Q3, Q4. So it's a new thing that I learn also. And every time you learn all the time, right? So that's the nice thing. Yeah. Well, I went you're hitting on something we, um, that I'm doing as well. It, it, it's now called like demand generation or demand capture. So when we do emails, the normal emails that the, the per or the marketing, the purpose is to find people who are in need, like they, they just got the grant and they need to do some, and the testing is kind of needed to do the, do the, to do the work they want to do. And then they suddenly pop an email and say, Hey, do you want to have the service? You're like, yeah, perfect. So you're capturing that demand, yeah. but then you have the demand generation, which is what you talked about there. Um, that that's what, that's also why I'm doing these podcasts is that when they might not need it right now, but they, they, they will in the future. And you can highlight that this is how, this is why this is useful for you. Then they might not buy right away, but if it, as long as it sticks in their mind, like, yeah, this was a great angle. This is something I should absolutely, absolutely do. Then suddenly when the time comes, you're like, yeah, now, now they contact you. No problem. They like what you do. I've seen your videos. I've seen your podcast and, uh, you know, I, I, you have great results or something and then like, and they, they will buy. So that's just something that I'm doing with this, but you still need to have the man capture and you still, still need to get clients in, but you can supplement it or have it like 50, 50 with also have this demand generation angle. And I guess that's what you're doing with your video, with your vlog idea as well. Yes. And, and the vlog is new things actually we don't know yet. Uh, but we feel like, uh, based on our hypothesis previously, so we tested, you know, different type of model, like photo, uh, only text, only link and then a short video and the engagement because our, uh, is, you know, you measure reach and engagement, right? But we focus only in, in engagement because engagement is the one mm. who really, uh, uh, likes you or like uh, really pay attention to you in a way interested in you. So we, we measure that actually when we post video, uh, the engagement is the highest mm. among other, uh, channels and we realize, Oh, Maybe then we should start doing, uh, more, more on this video kind of, more, uh, post, mm. but in the short one, we make sure that it's only one minute, not even one minute, like, like, you know, 30 second kind of reel, like Instagram reels kind of type. Uh, but then again, the topic is not us. It's all about the customers. It's all about what to do. It's about more like 
they is, they call this the hidden marketing is it called mm-hmm. that you don't really uh, promote your company or what you do but it's actually they will remember it's oh, antibiotic resistant in west water they will remember resistomab somehow that kind of type of <laughs> marketing so we try to be very soft in this case because aggressive is not fit for our market uh, we are more, uh, we try to remind people that this is important what we do. Like you need, we need to, to protect ourselves and the environment and animals. So uh, we try not like really, you know what I mean, right? The sales uh, model that is also for the impact and try to more uh, keep our branding in, in there. When, so. when it comes to content like this, <laughs> yeah, I think they say what well, the no sell is the best sell. That of, you, they, <laughs> yeah, you have to kind of, they have to know that you are selling something like if they don't even know that they they will not buy but if they know yeah you know we're having this uh, thing uh, that we sell we antibiotic resistant uh, measuring in the in water and and then you know you can move on talk about something else and they will they they people are not stupid they know oh this, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah you sell this but that's part of what we do but also like we're trying to make the world a better place using this so you can talk about so many other things that are not about the product itself so, uh, yes, but that's really nice that so you're trying to do that. Also, you do, you've done, uh, I wanted to ask you about webinars as well. I've seen you've done some in the past. Have they been effective? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Webinar is actually really, really great, but there's a downside on that. Uh, I mean, the positive, I think everyone has already, right? Uh, there's just one more focus, the downside, and that's why we stop it. Uh, it's just too tiring. Mm. And a lot of people is doing it now. It's just like, I think people just get bored. It's just new hype thing and then down. So, uh, or at least for us, because in the very beginning, we are one of the first, like, you know, like, Ooh, uh, you know, we are inviting this world-class level professor, give a talk about the topic. Again, like this sales, not selling things. And, and, and our reach is really, really nice. Like we even uh, have a, over a thousand people across 50 countries, uh, the audience. So it's really, I think for, for a, you know, for antibiotic resistant in the environment. A thousand? <laughs> for, over, over a thousand. Wow. <laughs> That's and from quite impressive. Individual, unique, individual, unique uh, register. Of course, they are coming back if you have the total. is quite a lot, I think. But then across 50, 50 countries also, so it's quite really nice reach. Uh, and it's because, you know, everyone can get the access if you have the internet. But then, and then, but many others starting doing similar to us, and we start to like, nah, we don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we like new things, and we kind of like unique. We want to feel like, uh, you know, like people, ah, oh, we should go to resist them up to see this, that kind of feeling that they couldn't find anywhere else. So we try, always try to do unique things, and this was the flow of things that's why came out, and we started, hey, no one has been done this in our area, I mean. Uh, many of them is more like in the brand and shopping kind, right? But not so much in kind of laboratory genetic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you got to say that what, there was some, uh, I did a couple of like, uh, I looked at some stuff. And for example, Microsoft has, I don't know, Microsoft owns LinkedIn. So you can see and Microsoft uh, checked their posts on their company page and they had like zero likes, five likes, one like on their comments, uh, on their posts. And I was like, they even own the platform. So they could, you know, promote as much as they want there and nobody cares. But <laughs> if you look at, and the same is for all companies in, in LinkedIn, now we'll talk about LinkedIn, but the individuals, they get a ton of engagement. So it seems like, well, I guess it makes sense. We humans don't care as much for a company or brand. We care about people who are related to that. So that's why I think yes. the, when you see this marketing stuff that you're maybe your competitors doing, if it's not human, people don't care. They want to see yes. what is windy. What does windy think about this? And what's the story behind that? Mm. And why is it good from her perspective or from somebody else's perspective? Like now we're talking here about this. So we get two people's perspective on a topic. This is what people want. And I think we've always wanted it, but somehow it became so I will use like a clinical or minimalistic or something that we don't, we, we wanted to remove the human from the equation somehow. And that would be more beautiful or more, uh, ideal. It should be more like a machine and less like a human. And I think that's, we, we humans didn't like that. We like the human human part and <laughs> yeah. we're using technology to transfer the information, but we still like the human touch. So I think you're on, I think you're onto something, Wendy. I would love to see, talk with you again, you know, in half a year or so and see what the results have been on your, <laughs> uh, on your uh, videos. But of course, we need to divide here also because what we do also quite technical. 
uh, in the very beginning only this the human mm. things, but then when there are the court in, <laughs> when the cell sign, you know, when the the yeah the project signed, then then it's like human out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yes. it's really like you know, it's like everything needs to be follow protocol. This is how it's supposed to be done, done, done. Again. Yeah. So we need to be careful also that not always human. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it just. It also depends on the models of the customer uh, business, but uh, if you are also the more technical business, this human part only just to uh, get the attention and uh, you know uh, make some first contact. Yeah, I mean, and for you guys, but it's, it's uh, contact, you have to yeah. come across as professional, even though you're like you're human, but you have to come out as professional yeah. because you're not playing yeah. around with your tests. They are very real and well done. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it needs to be also reflect in your branding because I learned that young company usually they're still confused in how to brand their their, their company or their product. Uh, in our case, I think branding is very important. For example, our branding is like approachable yet reliable. So this is and transparent. So it's three branding that we have, and you can see that in our post, we are the human part is because the branding of we are approachable that hey we are here and we are pinky and <laughs> and smile and happy uh, but then the reliable part is when we are starting to do the work then we are very uh, professional what we do and i mean you know what we do right we have long experience and it's more the science part and then the transparent and when we produce how we processes are very open with everyone so i think this branding kind of uh is I, I remember when I talked to some other young company who has a bit struggle, let's say, in trying to promote what they do, even they do a really great job of, I mean, every work, what they, I mean, every work is really great, right? Otherwise, there is no business, they're not, they're not doing the business. Uh, but many of them, sometimes they don't even aware of what, what are their brand. So I was like, what, you don't you have it from the very beginning? Uh, and that's why I think maybe one, my comment to old me, like, Wind is good that you are doing this branding from early stage because it helped me on on shaping where we want to go and what kind of method that you want to choose in sales and marketing and even how you approach the customer. So I think this is also for the others who who, who think that our branding maybe only when you are big enough. No, it's not true. You should start from the early early stage, like even when you start while you are doing it. when you start the business from the first day. You need to start thinking the branding and then when you build the team reevaluate your branding because it's very different right when you are solo founders or co-founders and then when you have better bigger team like in my case now we are 10 so i always make sure that to communicate with them also are the branding still the same are we have the same idea on the, how the branding should be because then everyone every team uh have a same mindset mm. that oh we should when we're in the system up we are like this so it's like that kind of I think I, I would see that it's really affect a lot in how we are doing sales too. So that people, people just get this easy mindset when they see the system up or, or think about the system up for my customer. Right? Yeah, no, I think it's good. And that helps to align the team. If somebody's acting and you feel they act in some way and you feel in your stomach, like this is not right. Something's wrong. You can mm. go back to look mm. at what is the values of the brand? How are we going to conduct ourselves? And then you can like, yeah, it's because this part of transparency wasn't the way it should. Then it's easy. It's easier f as a manager to say like, this is why I feel like this. And here's the problem. And then it's easier to address yes. it than if you just something's wrong, but you don't have any, like, what are the values that we actually have here? It's a little bit more uncertain. So I think that's really good. Okay. Wendy, what else, um, anything else that you feel that you'd like to share here that you think is good to know when you're trying to sell abroad or get going with your business abroad? Uh, business abroad, uh, I think first of all, since we, if we are a company in Finland, please use business Finland. I heard that not so many companies use their service. I think that's really, really, uh, not, I mean, it's not, it's not good, but I mean, they are there to help you. In my case, I think I'm using all the, the, the potential help that I could get from business Finland. Uh, and trust me, they are really, really great job in what they're doing. Of course, depend on, again on your business and try to figure out what type of help that you can get from them. Not sometimes, of course, they cannot help everything, but understanding there's some part of that you can be helped because I'm talking about internationalization, right? Uh, we don't know the area. If we hire, let's say, just some business consultant to do that, because many of, I know some smaller company, they just hire 
this business consultant in that country directly like that. And 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 then I heard a lot. They do a lot of a lot of fails there. I mean, a lot of failures. Uh, in my case, that's why I usually contact the business Finland there first, asking of the situation. Do they know even any business uh, consultant that could help me? Could you introduce the one who business consultant who understand uh, Finnish culture, yet the local culture, and do they understand my area? What can you know? This kind of this information you can get. So no need directly, just simply because are oh, you reading some news that they are doing good job, but sometimes they might they not fit to your business. At least that's what I learn a lot. And sometimes in bigger country, like because now I'm targeting UK, <laughs> so starting from the German scholar UK, it is the real market for us. <laughs> uh, not not only business Finland in the UK, but also British embassy in Finland could help me. So try to check this kind of the embassy. I'm like type of people like asking the embassy, and I knew that not so many company are actually have a thinking that you can contact embassy for, for your business. But trust me, in every embassy, they have their own uh, unit for economy or business. So if you contact them and and you can get a lot of help, actually. That's, at least that's uh, my bit, uh, what I do a bit different from others, that I have very, very good relationship with every embassy in, in pretty much around the globe either Finnish embassy abroad, or if I target, for example, UK, then I, I have very close relationship also with the UK embassy here in Finland. So I think it's a bit different, right? I you might never heard about it. No, I think that's a great, life. great idea. Thank you, Winnie, for sharing. That's a great idea. Is there <laughs> anything else that you that you think that this I would like you would like to share? Um, other things, I'm not sure, but I think just again, love what you do with a lot of excitement and thinking about uh, uh, how people will get your help. I think that is the most important. And that's about sales, right? Yeah. We are helping people too. Finding people who will need our help. I think, yeah, I think I'm with you there. I, I think the, the, the term I try to use is that you get to think that you have, your, your offering is like a package, like a present, and that you're giving it from your heart to their heart. Like they have an issue. I think you have an issue. And here's my gift that the, I think this is good for you. And if it comes with that feeling in, if you can come get that feeling across in your email and also in your own emotions when you're doing it, it starts to feel that it does, you know, and that's what it should be. I'm not just saying this, a mental model. You should, that's the value of your product. And if you don't have that type mm. of product, then, then of course you feel bad when you try to sell. But if you have a product which is like that, then, then, and it's at the angle, then it's much easier to, to get it going. All right, Wendy, I was say yes. thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for coming to the Euroscalers podcast. If people want to find you, you're Windy Musi Asari at, uh, you're big on LinkedIn. Do you also on other platforms that you hang out? Uh, I think mostly LinkedIn. All right. Yeah, Twitter and, uh, and LinkedIn. All right, Windy, thank you very much for coming. Thank you everybody for listening and uh, until next time.